All right, y'all, I'm going to end this episode like I always do. Showing love and shouting out. And today I want to shout out Ken Riley, a pro football Hall of Famer. Okay, I know the real ones over there with fam you are going to be happy to hear that. Y'all going to be happy to say that and post that. Ken Riley. Pro Football Hall of Fame, okay? And I know y'all feel like it's uh, much too late that he's enshrined in the Hall of Fame. I know uh, you probably pissed and saying, you know, you wish he uh, was alive to see it. But you got to still be proud of it, okay? Now, for y'all real ones who are unfamiliar with Ken Riley, uh like I said, he played at FAMU. He's actually a quarterback at FAMU. Okay. Uh, was a Rhodes Scholar candidate. So that meant he was a brilliant human being as well. Went on to the NFL, played for the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, had a 15-year career. Retired with 65 picks, 65 interceptions, because they converted him to a DB. Okay. Um, that puts him in the top five all time, still to this day, for interceptions. After his career went back to FAMU eventually, after being an assistant coach uh, for my Green Bay Packers. He went back to FAMU eventually, though, and was a head coach and athletic director. Okay. Enjoyed success there. If I'm not mistaken, won a few MEAC championships and coach of the years. So his brother lived the life. But now his resume also says Pro Football Hall of Famer. I want to shout him out, though, y'all, because he is a another example of how all this shit about facilities and 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 and, and this and that at, at these bigger schools make all the difference. I keep telling you, that shit bells and whistles. That's the flash. That ain't substance. Because if it was the substance, how in the hell do these men from that era keep making the Pro Football Hall of Fame? How did they play so well when they got there if they came from such underfunded school if the school's underfunded now what the fuck were they then if they are still underfunded in 2023 when we've had a black president we currently have a black vice president who graduated from an HBCU. You actually got black, you got a congressional black caucus and all this type of shit. If it's still underfunded now, then God damn it, what was it back then doing Jim Crow? Or immediately after Jim Crow? The disparity was still there. If not worse. And somehow, these men managed to be big enough, strong enough, fast enough, have good enough football IQ to leave these HBCUs like FAMU and go tear up the league. So much so that they become Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's almost like you just need a bench press, a squat rack, some dumbbells, and some green grass. Some good coaches that love you, and that motivate you, that know the game, that push you. And a community that supports you and loves you and honors you. 
seem like that's what you just you just need that to go be great. And that you don't need a pool table and the Xbox at everybody locker and and the Corvette paid for by the booster and all this. It's almost like you don't need that to go be a Hall of Famer. Mm. Also, it highlights, as some of y'all have already stated, y'all real ones, y'all know it, y'all been saying it the whole time, that Coach Prime being in the swag wasn't the first time that you had somebody who was a pro football player come coaching the swag. Wasn't the first time. And ain't it ironic that Mr. Riley was a DB himself? Ain't that ironic? And shit, he actually coached in the NFL. So you go, oh, he was more qualified than Cope. But some of y'all been saying this. Some of y'all been saying this correctly. But you got kings like this, who probably doesn't, you know, nobody has had the biggest, the, as, as big a personality in NFL history as Prime, probably. But there have been guys like Mr. Riley, Coach Riley. I see many of, uh, Kings and fam, you respectfully call them. Don't have the pizzazz, got the substance. And finally, they're honoring him for the substance, honoring him for his play on the field. Okay. So I want to say shout out to him, shout out to his family, shout out to all the kings and queens of fam, you, all the real ones that down with me from over there. You know what I'm saying? You got you another one. All right? So shout out to all y'all. And shout out to all of you real ones around the world that down with me. This concludes episode 140 of the realest, most entertaining sports show in the game. Put it on something. Please continue to be down with me. You understand? Uh, please follow me across all social media platforms. Uh Join the channel, become an official member, as I stated previously. Also, feel free to hit that cash app. Anything you give does uh, help tremendously, man. For real, friend. I thank God for all of you who have contributed. Thank I thank God for you. For real, friend. Y'all and all the realest ones uh, that have joined the channel. Real talk. All right. So, please continue, continue to stay down with me. And please, get registered to vote. If you're not registered to vote, Get registered to vote, especially if you live in the state of Mississippi. We have statewide elections coming up, okay? Don't let's not just be reactive all the time. Let's be proactive and get in front in front of some of this fuck shit that's going on. Okay. So you might see me wearing this motherfucker a lot. Okay. We got to get registered to vote. Get your kid registered to vote. They are of age. All right. But appreciate y'all. Love y'all as always. One. Thank you so much for watching my daddy's YouTube channel. Make sure you like, share, and turn on your post notifications. Okay, how do I do it?